he got into this aircraft. It's a, a sea craft. It takes off from the water, as you can see, by the front end bow. And he had his second crash. Well, the second crash uh, wasn't as bad as it's going to be on another crash. But he had been trying to get government business. If you get in with the government, you probably know you got it pretty good, supplying the government. But they didn't want anything that he had. They didn't need drill bits. They weren't interested at that time in his aircraft. He invented the flexible ammunition belt. Up to that time, they were rigid uh, metal holders for the ammunition. So now they could put them better on, on a fighter aircraft. That got him government contracts and he was able to, to bid now on future contracts. This is an aircraft that he designed called the X-2. And there was a, a competition going on for a, a long distance reconnaissance aircraft, kind of a hybrid reconnaissance fighter. And he came up with this, very innovative. As you see, the tail design and the front end. Looking from the side, it had two counter-rotating counter propellers, feeling that, that would give better thrust. So very innovative. That's him. He flew most of his test flights. Crash number three. This was the big one. This was the big one. He had trouble with those propellers. And it, he, he had a lot of trouble controlling the aircraft and was trying to land it on a golf course in the area. Didn't make it and hit an apartment building. And you can see some of the damage there. Really wrecked it bad and wrecked him real bad. He was in the hospital a very long time. And you can see by this article here, he was bored to tears. He had his, his men come in and design the prototype for the hospital bed that's used today. Now, it's said that he never actually was able to be in it because it took that long to, to create. But he was always thinking. Now, his stay in the hospital because at this time his pain was outrageous. Broken bones, lung problems, head issues, things like that. And that's where he got addicted to codeine and morphine and other opiates. 1941, but it had been going on a couple years before that. We were staying neutral. However, we supplied products and machinery to England. England was losing a lot of their ships. And so they had Henry Kaiser. Henry Kaiser, big industrialist. If you're from the Bay Area, there's a lot of things named Kaiser, Kaiser Hospital, etc., etc. And he was a big industrialist. And they went to Henry Kaiser and said, We need you to build some ships for us and speak English. So he went out to Richmond, Richmond, California, and built these. These are called Liberty ships. The Liberty ships were primarily a cargo-carrying craft. They made over 400 at the Richmond site. They were made at many other sites. Over 1,400 Liberty ships were built. It's the largest number of any single design ship that was ever built. Now, they tried taking uh, soldiers in those, but they weren't designed that way. They did have issues with sanitation, with bathrooms, and things like that. Some did go out carrying troops, but in general, uh, they were cargo. And by the way, if you go to Richmond, there's a beautiful National Park site called the Rosie the Riveter Museum. It's east of Oakland, maybe 40 miles, 30 miles. It is a great tour that you can get. And you can see the successor to this, it's a victory ship, and tours are given on that. And by the way, there's only two Liberty ships left on the planet from all of those. One of them is in San Francisco. It's called the Jeremiah O'Brien. It was the only ship to sail to the 50th reunion of Normandy. It was there at Normandy during the invasion. Well, the Army is getting tired of these ships getting blown up. And they said, Henry, can you build us an aircraft to fly over uh, the, the uh, North Atlantic? And working with Howard Hughes, as you see, 1942 they started it. They came up with the Spruce Goose. Howard was not, a, uh, excuse me, Henry Kaiser was not an aviation man, but he knew Howard knew that, and he knew Howard's capabilities. And so the two of them got together, and they called it the HK-4. It was designed to carry 700 troops, or 10 large tanks. <coughs> 